In part 5 of my ARDL series, I present the error correction model, which is what you do after you confirm co-integration in the bounds test. Alright, and the key question here is, given that co-integration exists, what's the speed of adjustment to long-run equilibrium after a deviation has occurred in the short run? And so we know that if there is co-integration, we then should proceed to specify the error correction model for representation, the error correction representation that you see right here, in which uh, the uh, long run terms in the ARDL bounds test specification is now replaced by the error correction term whose coefficient is the all important phi, the speed of the speed of, of adjustments. So and to ensure convergence toward long run equilibrium, phi, this coefficient needs to be negative and statistically significant. Otherwise the model would be considered unstable and rather explosive. Now though also if phi is statistically significant, it also means that x, the explanatory variable, Granger causes the uh, dependent variable. And we're going to verify the significance of phi by checking out the t statistic right next to it. And by the way, the error correction term, this error correction term, is simply the lagged OLS residuals from running this long run model right here. And in lagged form, you can see it right here. So let's go ahead and show it up. So now, um, going right here to eViews, um, this was uh, the entry we made prior to running the bounce test. And if I were to click OK and go right here to View and Coefficient Diagnostics and Long Run Form Bounce Test, and I scroll down, you can see the F statistic, you can also see that this value is greater than the upper bound and that's why we said that there is co-integration. So now on this ARDL bounds test output we can obtain the parsimonious error correction model given by eViews and, and to do so we go to view, we go to coefficient diagnostics and we come here to error correction form and right there you'll see the coefficients of the co-integrating equation which really is the speed of adjustments. Now this eViews approach produces the parsimonious error correction model in which the test array parameterizes the model within the ARDL framework. However, my preference is to develop the error correction model directly. And so we're going to do so by first specifying the long run model in order to uh, obtain the residuals aka the error correction term. So to do so we're going to go to quick estimate equation and here's the long run model. All right, I'm going to use uppercase so you can see it well. All right, lar and then put c for constant and lbxm and lbx right there. And so this is a le this is a least squares estimation, and all we got to do is making sure this is all cool. Click OK, and that's the long run model output right here. All right, now though, what we want are the residuals of this model. So for that, we're going to go to Proc, Make Residuals, and right here, make sure it's checked ordinary, and that's the name of the residuals. But I tell you what, let's get fancy and call it spade a spade. Let's call it ECT for error correction term. All right, and then when I click OK, you're going to see it pop out right here. So OK, and you'll see it right there. And these are this. This is a series right here. OK, let's X out of the series. OK, so we're now good to go. So we're now ready to run the error correction model, and to do so go back to quick and estimate equation and then type out the error correction uh, representation right here alright I cheated I copied it from my PowerPoint and just quickly pasted it to save time 
<laughs> all right it's gonna be a least queries estimation right there so I just go ahead and click OK and and right here by the way I was careful to ensure that I use one lag for each of the variables because that's what my lag selection told me to do anyhow check this out that's our error correction model line right here these are actually the short run um, terms and these are the corresponding coefficients and however right now this is our focus right and that's our key key focus and this value right here as you can see which is the coefficients of the error correction term is ne is both negative and statistically significant and this is telling us that about 40 percent of departures from long-run equilibrium is corrected each period and since this term is since this coefficient is statistically significant it also means that we have long-run Granger causality jointly running from the two explanatory variables to the dependent variable LAR. Now Note again, um, as we get ready to wrap this up, that the error correction model is only appropriate when we have co-integration. Otherwise, we can only run the short-run ARDL model and make inference on short-run causal effects. All right, but before we get get out of here, let's do a quick model, uh, quick di final diagnostics, real quick. At least let's go to view and make sure that there is no zero correlation residual diagnostics zero correlation LM test I'm going to leave it at 2 which is what I used um, in my bounce test okay and uh, because the p-value here is more than 5% we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no zero correlation so we're quite happy with that and we can also do a bit of stability diagnostics Let's go to uh, stability uh, to recursive estimates only, and we could choose custom of of squares test, and because this blue line lies within the five percent boundary, um, it tells us that this model is uh, stable. So we're quite happy with this too, and that's a wrap.